Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in to Market for Immaterial Value. We are Valentina Carga and Peter Jan Grandri, and tonight we are here with... I'm Federica Buadi. I'm a writer and yeah, art critic based in Berlin and Oslo. My name is Fatimi and I, do, I come from a background in architecture, but I now work more within the arts. And I'm, mm. I've been involved in organizing and running a couple of spaces. Um, one of which is a space now called the Public Library, where we do workshops and events and discussions. <coughs> I'm Lorenzo Sandoval, I'm an arts and curator, and I work with different tools to develop the projects. Sometimes it's like um, a spatial design, other times curation, other time edition, uh, other times photography, or it's like depending on the project, I use different media. Yeah, I'm Christopher Kansing, I'm the artistic director of Transmedia. I'm yes. very happy to host the meeting. Um, I'm Rebecca, and I don't know, actually I don't like those terms to describe activities, so but what I do is I do books, exhibitions, and some kind of research and in the end I think just connecting people together and kind of trying to bring them into a nice constellation. Sounds good. I'm Daphne, I work as a curator in Naples and in Berlin. Uh, I work on digital art and culture. In the past, I have worked on game art, game based art, as it was called. Then I moved more to the networks, network based art, and then I also started working on the commons. And this is how I met Valentina and Peter and got very excited. <laughs> and what else? Well, uh, this last year I worked uh, with the team of Transmedia for this year's festival, and now I'm trying to finish my PhD. <laughs> Uh, I'm Gilly. <coughs> I'm a little bit sick today, I'm sorry. Um, I'm an independent curator, uh, but I work mainly in uh, temporary architecture. And uh, right now I just started a new research project about regulation of public space. So that's why, what I'm interested in right now. Okay. <coughs> Thank you all for doing that. <laughs> Uh, so I will just go ahead and start. Um, two years ago, Peter and I started this project, which was called, um, at the time, Valentina and Peter invest in themselves. And it came from a conversation we had at home very often about, you know, ab- about our future, basically. Like, we are the first generation after, I mean, one of the first generation that don't have anything and it's really hard to actually, to even have uh, a pension or, you know, like very basic structures that are, uh, that we're, we're indoctrinated in because our parents did everything so, you know, structured in a way. Uh, so, and this creates some sort of uh, fear and insecurity, then later we, we understood that this is called precarity. <laughs> Uh, and we were thinking, okay, what can we do to actually to do something about it? I mean, it's not possible that we don't have this dialogue at all and that everybody seems to be f- fine relocating all the time and doing all kinds of jobs and, you know, like not really building something for the future, let's say. But it can be something totally different than how it was imagined before, but maybe it should be something. Um, and uh, so we made this piece, which was actually, um, it is a small scul- sculpture in a way. It is this golden coin that has our faces on. This? Yes. Yeah. It's this. Yeah, you can take it, it out. Really? Yeah. So we actually took uh, a coin from Queen Elizabeth and we melted it and we did this. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like we stole it from her. We can buy this. It's like bullion gold. It's the gold what you use to trade on the market. Also. Yes, exactly. Stock gold. And then another source of inspiration came from from my mother, who had 
converted all her little savings into gold because there were yeah, there was crisis in Greece, so nothing was really money was not really stable. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but this was more of like a symbolic symbolic uh, act, let's say. And for us, the actual piece is not the the object, but is this conversation we're having. And as a conversation, we also presented it in Athens Biennale. And there we got really, Daphne was also there in the audience that day. And I don't remember much because I was extremely stressed. <laughs> but I remember this very critical comment we got that like some people were even angry at us talking so openly about finance and art in a way. And they were saying, no, artists have always been poor. You know, some older la ladies that had this very romantic uh, mm -hmm. idea about how the artists should live, you know. And why suddenly, I mean, do another job if you want security, basically. Well, so it's not a stupid observation. There is something true in that. There is I something think. true in that, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we, can, we can analyze this later. Uh, and then the other uh, comment was like, yes, but you actually, by making this coin that could possibly go again through a typical art market, you know, you're also presenting it in a biennial and so on. And actually, we were also making kind of uh, a point with that as well. That is, this coin was kind of like paying our entrance to the art world, you know. Uh, so the other point is that, that you don't actually invent something new, you don't actually try to change anything. And that, we, we took it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we took that very seriously and we said, okay, the follow-up project should be that we're actually trying to do something about this uh, and not like a, a commentary work. So we start from this very naive point that we want to create a, a, a third way, like a different art market, let's say. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit the idea that we made this coin which, which symbolizes an idea which we are interested in working around. Mm -hmm. But this idea we cannot make money from. So we have to sell the coin in order to get, as an artwork or art yeah. object, to get money, right? Mm -hmm. And we were, we were imagining, like, is there another way? Because if this then gets sold on an art market, it becomes the object and an object, that, and it, it loses the story of what it's actually telling. So we're interested in discovering a way that we can sell, make money from it without actually selling it somehow, or without... With without this idea of ownership, of you possessing it. Yes. So you, can, sure. you can speculate also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's the idea. One of the ideas we had, <laughs> we had from that was to kind of, we, we take the coin, we take what it was kind of, uh, what what for us seems a fair amount to ask for for this this idea, and we divide that by let's say a thousand. Mm. So then we have a thousand shares, mm. and people can buy shares. One, it, the, I mean, one is would would be like three euros or something. So you can buy for three euros a share. You can hang it on your wall. And this would mean that you uh, are probably somehow invested in the art project without actually owning the thing. So you just own the share, but you, so you own a piece of it without owning the object somehow. And to explore somehow this this idea of like... And it could be a model of co-ownership of the, you know, you have this kind of a proxy of the artwork. That's funny because that it's uh, worth having yet for the Reina Sophia, like he talks uh, about a, a similar model, like he talks about the Museum as a custodium. Mm. So actually, like the artwork that should be like that, the collection is like from the people. Like it's supposed like it's like that because it's the cultural heritage. Mm. And he <coughs> talks about this idea of uh, custody. Also, Suale Malik mm. wrote, I think, recently a mm. lot about this idea of co-ownership, where basically the artist still own the the, the work, mm -hmm. but it just gives gives a copy, I don't know, to the collector, or to the museum, and so there is always this kind of sharing. Yeah. So it doesn't, I don't know exactly what it is, yeah. but I, I heard someone mm. discussing that. Yeah. So he wrote, recently wrote a book yeah. Yeah. precisely on cool. this kind of possible cool. model. Yeah. We yeah. should try to find it also. Like, like the idea of the project for Transmediala mm. is actually to kind of uh, collect this kind of conversation, is kind of to be very quick to, and collect kind of these thoughts about it, put mm. them somehow publicly available on the website, 
and make uh, and make different modes all the time. So the one with the shares that I just mentioned, we're gonna try it just to see if it works or, or where, where the problems are. And we also have another one which we wanna try, which uh, it works with uh, with the lottery. Mm -hmm. So you have an artist which makes an object, let's say, and we just sell uh, lottery tickets and you win it, like you can win. Uh, or maybe <coughs> from a computer or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. But if you have like, if it's very, very popular and you sell a million tickets, the artist gets a million euros and, and one student can mm. get it. You, you don't have make to make one with, with insurance too and accidents mm. of people. Mm. So then like, the people can invest money. If there is no accident, you give all the money and you don't have to pay anything. Yeah. But are we <laughs> like from crowdfunding? Yeah, this is, is indeed a, a question we are having now with that model as well, but maybe it's... I mean, with crowdfunding, it's kind of it's more you you buy these perks, mm -hmm. you know, you buy this uh, or you you pre buy some a book or you pr yeah. buy a postcard yeah. or something somewhere, yeah. and that's kind of the the motives to crowdfund. Well, but this not really, really you is know, it? Not yeah, really. also not. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think you know, uh, it's very similar no. indeed to crowd crowdfunding as a model, but we want to do it specifically. For the lottery works. Yeah, the lottery model. It's not so similar. I mean, there you have this kind of reward-based model where you, mm. here you basically buy something. You, well, you, you might, I mean, you buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you might also be. But then maybe we should also think of inventing a new name for the lottery ticket because these uh, two ideas that Peter explained could be even combined, and then this lottery ticket becomes also this. You know this uh, uh, um, contract that you somehow co-own this piece of art as well. So, as a, but as a conception, it's not so different from crowdfunding because it's it's a lot about solidarity, mm -hmm. no, and then about collective investment of many people for. Uh, for what what does work with with lottery actually? Like, if my like a lot of people, they don't buy the ticket, and they like the promised price it's uh, less value than the people invest on that yeah this, this, this could happen for instance but you could also say it's mm -hmm. a time based thing like yeah. the you can sell tickets mm -hmm. until then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and whatever you sell yeah. until then mm -hmm. is what you have or you can say only a thousand tickets are available or you can say there is yeah it can also be that it's for for instance performance or mm -hmm. something so you it means that you don't buy you, you don't own get 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 uh, chosen to own it, but to partake or to have a code on a website to visit or to mm -hmm. have an entrance code. Or it can be many other things, which which, and I think. Or that I uh, was even thinking this more, um, this uh, more like exchange economy model where you give the artist whatever he needs for this month. To, you know, you give him a place to stay, maybe, or food, or you know, things like that. That could be extremely complicated to organize, but it could be a possible model. Um, and then, um, can you yeah. ask a stupid question? Yeah. But wh what is exactly like that you are interested in? Because I think you, we can speculate on the model, but I think yeah. the first thing is just to state, okay, what what is the interest? Like what? What kind of model am I interested? In? What kind of question do I have? Um, I think my question is more: if art can uh, help envision different economic models and also put them to work th under the, <coughs> you know, the disguise of it being an artwork at the same time, because I think there is a lot of this separation of okay I, I do work and I make money from it mm -hmm. and most of the times how the money is made is really hidden or not spoken at all no? because it somehow mm -hmm. destroys or uh, undermines the art part of it's not so nice to talk about money it's better to talk about beautiful things I don't know yeah uh, so um, so I was thinking, like, if if an artwork though has inside uh, its its conceptual basis a concept about how it can produce money as well through a different economy that perhaps is more sustainable, that is uh, less speculative, uh, that is not only open to the big alpha consumers of the art but also other people, so it's more inclusive, 
and, uh, and maybe it's also more uh, even environmentally friendly. You know, all these other questions that we see a lot in uh, going, not a lot, but in other fields of economy, there is some critical questions about, you know, how we do really produce objects that we bring about food, you know, we bring food from so far away, this is not really sustainable. While I think in the arts, maybe it's a totally obsolete to have a discussion like that. Yeah. But because maybe it would be interesting at the same time, I don't know. I, I think that you, as, as soon as you kind of start to apply the same kind of criteria for, for value and worth that you have kind of in other fields of economy or you just come into the trap again, um, okay, let's buy sustainable art or let's yeah. buy, so it's it's the same, you, you yeah. will come back to the same mechanism, is, yeah. mechanism that you want to overcome yeah. in yeah. the but end, and the so yeah. people just produce yeah. art because kind of at the moment it's fancy to do... Yeah, um, to buy bio or to yes. buy art. and uh, that's uh, kind of... Yeah, what's the yes. thing? Huh? Did you finish? Or <laughs> yes. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, this thing of the um, uh, on the Renzo Martin uh, piece, mm. like he was introducing the other day in the in the talk about like how they were like uh, I mean, I think like, uh, the brain is very interesting, but this part like it's, I think related like to what you were talking about now. Like they couldn't like transport their inner sculptures like the people were doing in Congo and that was one of the reasons why they decided like to scan them and like to transform them into into chocolate sculptures, into cacao sculptures. Mm -hmm. and and yeah, and that was interesting in the way like thinking like how to trade and how to transport like this art and yeah. like uh, come with other solution because I mean like the one of the problems with the physical mm -hmm. artworks also yeah. it's like uh, taxes like when there's like you have to mm -hmm. cross countries you have to pay also a lot and then mm -hmm. like suddenly like using something that is not artistic uh, for legal eyes then like it's easy like to to what make them. What is not artistic? Uh, like uh, sculptures made of chocolate in Belgium. So then yeah, you can move them around because it's just like a. a yeah. But my question would be, what if you would take as a kind of certain point that the the mm. fact that art, <coughs> art economy, is very different than w economy mm. than the 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 rest of the what we call like market economy yeah. if it's already a different economy and it works in a very alternative way yeah. to the to the market economy it takes something from that but in fact is different yeah. right you yeah. cannot compare like the functioning no. of the art okay. and how art okay. is sold and the value of art and how it works you cannot compare it to like the like a more let's say kind of like I don't know daily economy it's a highly speculative market you nothing has a fixed value like for instance Why when you're trading I mean with the, with the kind of quick uh, almost virtual trading of artworks today that you see yeah. it's kind of just what's it called flips turn yeah. yes, there is this yeah. term this good term and now it escapes me it's art flipping mm. yeah mm. which more works in this kind of financial uh, financial it really works according to a logical financialization of kind of a, a virtual goods that is being moved. Yeah, but this is uh, anyway a luxury <coughs> commodity. So it's part of the luxury market, not of the daily uh, but market. But also I think like mm, yeah. it's important to contemplate that in the in the art world and in the art market also it's like not only like the artists. Mm -hmm. They are like also like uh, people like working in construction like there is like a lot of professors that they are involved into the into the apple yeah. and we always tend to ignore them and that's also yeah, like, like that's a, a, a very important part of the economic of the art the economy of the art like it's something like we just think uh, art production artists creators and yeah. audience and that's all and, and, and actually we mm -hmm. had a discussion with mm -hmm. Angela who works uh, mm -hmm. for a bank she's mm -hmm. the bank banking consultant and she also works for a gallery which mm -hmm. is very interesting and she, she was saying that actually finance and art is very similar. Mm. It's, a, it's the same world, basically. Yeah, it's they the have same even the same vocabulary also. They have many, like, yeah. blue, blue chip yeah. and, like, mm. yeah. 
works. I think there's a question if you're focusing on art or on the artist <coughs> somehow, because I think that what you're saying stands very well for the art market, but not for the role of the artist that can take up many different roles. And I think that this is up to you to decide. Yeah. Would you like, like to focus? The, for me, the main, like the start of the, pro the, the main interest of the project is not so much, let's say, art market. Because we kind of all know how, how it works, no? like, or you're an artist, and you, it depends on which galleries you know, which, which who buys your art, which, that defines your value. Or you do films or performances, and you're relying on funding, and you you apply for fundings all the time. I think the interest for me w was a bit more like we are the first generation who grew up with internet. Suddenly, in this globalization, we we have everything on, on the tips of our hands. We know so much more than our parents did, and we. All are, are all like working for free. We're we're working f like on internship base, like, mm -hmm. and then you do projects which uh, rely on other people's input, like like here and now, for instance. Every, we don't pay you guys, but we rely on your, your your input. And I think all how this kind of shifts, and also into art, like how art becomes, because I mean, art it kind of I think you, it used to be maybe more the people that were outside of society, not having a job. So they had time to think about other stuff. So they had time to reflect on the society that was going on in front of them. So they were doing things and the society could, could relate to that because they could see that. But now because everybody or many people becomes, become in this precarious state that they have time, because we are reaching a state that we can, we, I mean, our, our society is evolved in a way that we have time, we don't need so to work all the time anymore, and also our mentality is changing. So how does this, uh, this, this, this free time, like if everybody is an artist now and everybody has time to think about this thing, how how do we deal with all these artists now suddenly, <laughs> for instance? Like, are there ways that they can make a, a living somehow or that they can have some or exchange which is in relation to what they're doing and, and stuff? Like it's kind of this global, and then you come into politics, no? then you come into like, okay, then we should have a minimum income for everybody because we can, I mean, there's no uh, state that, that it's not financially able to do this, so it's completely fine. And then you could have spent time, and then we could make rules like you can't sell art. It's, it's forbidden by yeah. law. Yeah, I think what Peter is talking about is that a model where you would unlink uh, work and and. Um, from what you actually do, mm -hmm. uh, uh, from time yeah. or from money, uh, would be the best. You know, you just get a salary per month. Whatever you do, you can survive from it. Mm -hmm. Basic income. A basic income, mm -hmm. and then whatever you do is unlinked from the fear or from the an anxiety to make a living out of it, or you know, to, to really survive. So, uh, and for sure, we think that that model, that utopian model, would have been the best. But we're not in a position that we can decide about that. So we have to find other yeah, ways to... Yeah. 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 So yeah. No, it will, yeah, it, it, it won't come because what happens is that horrible, basic, then democratic way of deciding things. So there will be so many people saying, okay, all those lazy artists and who don't want to, they will they will profit on our backs and it will not come to the end. But anyway, as long as the condition of yes. living at this one, even a minimum wage, it's not a political strategy that you can follow, to be honest. Because as long as the condition don't change, even if I yes. get the minimum wage, but the old system works in a particular way, anyway, it, it, nothing has changed. But I, I just have more money to buy thing. or to rent my apartment. But are having at the point yeah. where you have the basic income will have you mean that the system will have changed? So that that's possible. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure. That you can get a like a sort of kind of welfare state thing mm -hmm. where you get money but the system doesn't change. So mm -hmm. speculation is still happening. The thing mm -hmm. is the difference is that now more people have money to pay the rent, to buy more. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't I think I remember, mm. I'm just paraphrasing uh, Sigrid mm. Federici, mm. basically. But I think it will also okay. free up some, like, some, st like, I mean, I, I, a colleague of mine f f uh, that I share the office with, he just had, like, he's a freelancer, he, just, mm. he works for himself, we share the office. Uh, he just had an accident with a, with a bicycle, he broke his arm and he can't, pro he's a programmer, yeah. he can't code anymore for, like, three months. 
Plus he has to pay like 10,000 euros of stuff, plus the guy, yeah. I mean, he was, the guy hit him, he sued him. Like, and he doesn't, like, <laughs> he doesn't have money for a lawyer and he's, it's not even his fault. So yeah. he, like, he's pushed in a really narrow yeah. corner there. He can't well, fight for his rights because he just doesn't yeah. have the money. Well, if he would have a basic yeah. income, he would at least not have to worry about, I lose, uh, I lose, yeah. I don't know, so many jobs, I, I can't hire a lawyer, and then he could... I mean, this that's yeah. actually like I think I think like it's also important like to try like to find more connections within the art world and out of the art because it's something that, for example, like like to be freelancer, it's more and more common between people that they are not from the creative class. At least mm -hmm. in Spain, it's like people are forced like, to be on that. Yeah. And so we are thinking like, oh, artists are creative people. Like we have that situation. But it's not only like for artists, and I think like exactly. maybe it's like in terms of um, strategy in relation with society, maybe it's not very clear like to make the separation between arts as it is this space of strategy territoriality that it's like what we used to do uh, because of so many reasons. But it's also maybe important like to to start to think like how you can uh, con connect with the situation of all the other people mm -hmm. that they are like. I mean, like somehow in the creative class, it was like the first uh, model for that yeah. as an experiment. But imagine, like now, when with uh, yeah. machines, we are going to lose uh, a lot of jobs as well. Yeah. It's like this thing of yeah. when the machines start to do all the all the work, like yeah. uh, a lot of people that are going to be jobless and without income as well. So it's yeah. like something that like yeah. It's but we we kind of took this art, or we're we're focusing on on the art market somehow. I don't know because. It's still, it's maybe an old school thought that we think that like art still has this uh, this ability to reflect on contemporary society. So if you do it first with art, then society can yeah. can follow. But I don't know if the art market is there for good. It's a very ambitious. <laughs> but I yeah, think. Yeah, no, it's just. Uh, but you want to focus on the art market then. Yes. Sure. Yeah. 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 Mm. And it's meant to, it's and it's really yeah. funny because we're we're not really on the aftermarket <laughs> at all, you <laughs> know. Why you want to think? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, but it's it's really really because <laughs> I worked on a similar project actually. I know, I know that. I just we had we talked with them yesterday yes. actually. Should and this yeah. was really interesting and to to possibly. kind of do it in that. Like a framework of having a space, being an institution, people having expectations. We had not so much budget, and we're asking people for to col collaborate and uh, for no money. And then some of the reactions were like, "How can you do a project that is about precarity mm -hmm. in the end and uh, don't?" pay us anything at all but I think we will keep on doing the project but outside the frame of the institution and outside the framework of um, I give you work and you give me money because I think it doesn't function as long exactly. as the people function in a certain way and kind of are part of the system um, they can't overcome the system. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. You you kind of have free to free yourself from that mechanisms in order to experiment and work. And I'm I'm totally aware that we can't um, just stop to 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 use money or something. But I really think, and that was really nice at the, at the talk um, of Beetle actually mm. last week. Um, he <coughs> talked about kind of making um, power out of empathy, and so yeah. like turning empathy into power. And I think that what happens here at the moment is kind of it's kind of work connected so everyone is always complaining in the precarity discussions as well that they can't share, um, divide their free 
time and the working time anymore <coughs> because in the end it's everything they can but make is, is that the but we no we don't want to we don't want to mm. it's just like it's it's we do have to kind of look positive because to that 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 time we spend working for free it's just kind of a of a system of exchange of empathy exchange of ideas we don't want to be paid of it so no. we just stop have to stop complaining about not mm. being paid in those groups where we are thinking of ways to overcome the system because i don't think yeah. that's kind of yeah. uh, you know what i mean and we still have to be in the system kind of of earning our money but i don't yeah. think it makes sense to try to find ways to overcome the system within the system because in the I end think it's i mean basic for me basic income is really a good thing because like this like the the connection between money and work it, it was that it's you know it's uh, it, you, you work and you get paid for it to buy stuff but what if this stuff becomes life itself becomes mm -hmm health becomes housing which is which is normally i mean back in the day you bought you have a house you, you bought it so you live there you don't pay rent on it you you have family structure small village structures which, which serve your social health care needs and you need money to buy extra so that's why you work but if you now we need to work for all these basics so somehow this this doesn't make sense mm -hmm. anymore that, that that we work for money so now you work for something else and mm -hmm. and and yeah, and you get money for social help for like the basics of, of life. So if we, we if we would have <laughs> if we would have basic income, then we would not have this. Uh, yeah. But it, it's an easy solution. It's a t too easy. Basic to income. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's too easy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's too good to be true. true. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't know. It's dinner, and I need to have dinner. Shall I stop recording? Mm -hmm. so so it's one of those things. Yeah, you can eat. Good, my arm is red. No, I think it, like you are totally right with the idea of empathy, and I and I kind of I think empathy is incredibly important. We just have to be aware of the fact that, as post operators themselves say uh, many times, as a part of you know, reiterate many times, our like, post Fordism is based on the exploitation of precisely affects and communication and language are all these aspects that we f we understand as sharing cooperation is the base in the marxist sense, sense is the base of current production yes and i think we have to clearly kind of 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 um divide those things together uh, from each divide? other how can you divide if you if you kind of try to would fully use that way of 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 talking together or having ideas or sharing ideas and have dinner and then like in real life or uh, i don't know still yeah. are kind of aware to keep your position and and try to to really and so something Probably something will will happen in a in a world like that that in the end can no, influence right. our behavior and within the system. And you know what I mean, like 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 kind of a of a um, no, there are always cases of action, definitely. Um, yeah, you wanted to say something. No, no, please come on. Or, or I will say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, obviously, we're not outside of any system or just having dinner innocently here. Yeah. I, mean, no. like, I mean, from different <laughs> positions, <laughs> we're speaking in a very staged dinner situation. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that any dinner is uh, kind of somehow <laughs> staged <laughs> socially. <laughs> but I, mean, I won't do that. That's kind of banal. But um, it's augmented. Yeah. You know? No, but it's I was thinking about this space. point also about precarity. So, like, usually it's like kind of define more as a lack or, mm. or like a, a lack in everyday life I'm so precarious and yeah. so of course there was this uh, book by Isabelle Lovey and her work yeah. on precarity as a kind of state from which you should think that production is somehow today 
departing from. So yeah. if we go back to this Marxist uh, kind of discussions, it would be kind of interesting to think even about labor. Uh, I mean, labor is usually like what the worker is then able to, that's what the worker has. And it gets exploited, uh, of course, in a way, as a product of the, 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 the worker. But today, I think maybe this would be interesting to think about precarity as the thing that you have as an asset rather mm -hmm. than as a lack. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. selling yes. your precarity. Because precarity is like, I mean, artists today. Why are, yes. why are there so many artists being educated? This is also repeated in discussions over and over. Yeah. We're educating too many creatives. They can't get work. But it's actually a pretty good strategy yeah. to have a lot of creative people in a society where precarity <laughs> is needed. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need people who are self-sustained. You need people who are self-organized. Unless you're going to do like minimum wage on a very grand scale for everybody yeah. and reform mm -hmm. into some kind of mm, capitalist communist uh, model that I don't even know if it actually works. But you know, this is probably not going to happen. And precarity is... Uh, somehow a state which is now an asset and Structure. the more you can produce so how do you manage this precarity I think this is an mm -hmm. interesting question that is not really about the art market as, I mean, as such but I think cleverly somehow you could use the art market as a medium or platform mm -hmm. to address or intervene this question also like if you can kind of use it strategically in some way as you were thinking or technically but, but there is this bigger creative economy, innovation discourse, which I'm always confused about. Why yeah. do these people talk so much about creativity and innovation? Because they do not like creativity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, when you read it from like e e EU policy levels and so on, it's mm -hmm. so clearly not yeah. about supporting creative work in the end. Yeah. So uh, why is it there still? And it's probably this precarity. Yeah. We also need to, um, to take into consideration that I mean we have too many artists because the artists are doing too many jobs. Uh, they are multi-skilled artists. The kind of the role of the artist as the artist doing art books, at least in the field that we are working on, is not does not exist so much anymore. I mean, I was watching uh, James Bradley talk uh, at Republica, and he started by saying this: "I wear many hats, and I'm like that, that, and that, and I will kind of cover all of them." And it was the same thing that um, the Italians, like Salvatore and Oriana, that we were at Las Transmediale, were describing to me that, you know, you cannot survive otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's just a small side thing that you do, which is also a kind of an aspect of precarity. Yeah, some years ago, I was doing a residency in Nairobi, Kenya, in 2008, seven. and it was very interesting because we were like there in Juan Andras studio, and we met a lot of local artists from there. And I was like extremely fascinated, like how many artists were there. Like, it was like a lot of artists. Yeah, and then I had a conversation with, with some of them from there. And I was asking, like, like why you are so many artists? Amazing. And he was just saying, like, yeah, because maybe in Europe, if you need money, you can just go and work in a bar or something. But, but here, oh, we, we make art, or oh, we, we can't do anything. Yes, so we can make these sculptures and this painting and sell to the tourists. And that's the way they like to survive. And so they were making money from the tourism, from tourism, basically. From art. From art. That. That is combined <laughs> with tourism. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, that's but it's like here that in Berlin, if you talk about tourism, it's also like mm -hmm. very important in relation to the art. So it's not that different. <laughs> yeah, but here there is also our art for tourists, no? Like how? What, what's that it? Is. It's not anymore. Okay. Like <laughs> it's not that anymore. Well, well, actually, it works <laughs> better uh, now, probably. Uh, just, just the facade. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, the facade is like perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think it's, a, it's kind of a strange thing, like with that mm. whole precarity discussion. It's kind of not there is nothing between of totally romanticizing it like okay when I I don't want to work for money because that uh, corrupts my art or my or it is a total um, opposite people like really trying to apply the mm. economic terms to their work and work from because no, I, I no, I can't tell this because. <laughs> 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 no, because or, or, uh, if you if 
aqui o Sveto está... Eu não ouço isso. Meio que está a dar. Não, I'm, I'm, I'm working at, at... Or I'm, I'm part of a, of a group as well. Um, it's kind of a collective and we get um, quite a, a high foundation at the moment and the money is connected to the goal that we transform our space or our into a functioning uh, institution with organizational structures and earn money with it and suddenly we, we really have that, that, that funds that is connected to that task mm -hmm. and um, what happened because before it wasn't about money at all and it's good to, to earn money but something <laughs> but now it like really turned out that now people are trying to to work from nine to five to um, it, it's really like you, you can call someone at, uh, on Monday and then they say, okay, um, I'm not working today, it's my day off. And like something that really totally doesn't kind of go together, or at least for me. And there's nothing in between, like the, the total romanticization of the artist status and the, like really trying to be totally miserable mm -hmm. about the precarious state and then but that in between so you usually can be articulating your sound in the actual then relationships of collaboration so I mean yeah. for me yes. I'm also torn with all these like ideas on a daily basis but then I find like or I seek balances with people that I work with mm -hmm. who I, I also have people that I work with who are like oh it's a weekend I'm not doing anything yeah. mm -hmm. and for me it's like what? it's so crazy <laughs> but I also it's such a huge lesson for me that's yeah. about like, yeah. finding my own limits or like yeah. questioning what's normal uh, yeah. as an attitude in that and I think within the I cannot articulate any kind of I cannot formulate any kind of yeah I can, there's no formula to this as an in between but I often like by I don't know by being aware of these things, you there are balances that you can find in specific working scenarios, maybe. Yeah. But it's still not. Yeah, it's not a, a recipe that would work for everyone. But it's good that people don't work during the weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I think this you is need a some lesson. time, no? Yeah, coming from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a shock for me as well in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that people could set limits and just say no, and it's no. <laughs> it's Sunday. Yeah. yeah. We just don't have this, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I'll share that. Mm -hmm. I want to go but back a bit to this idea of uh, investment that you were yeah, uh, yeah, mentioning yeah. in the beginning. Because also, I mean, I mean, what you, uh, Rebecca, said in the beginning, like how you, if you, to create your model, whether you're going through market ideas and vocabularies, or if you're trying to create a, mo a model from a starting from some other space. But, um, yeah, I wanted to ask, like, I mean, also in the first project, like in this, you invest in yourselves, but also the idea of, se like, getting shares, and, and what, how do you imagine it? Uh, being an investment, or like what? W what is the actual? If I get a share in like this, uh, yeah. one of what these one thousand yeah. shares, this is what am I investing in? This is a new, the, n the new project actually. Mm. Like yeah. the coin yeah, yeah, was yeah, the yeah, first yeah, project, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. coin yeah. just symbolizes. Mm -hmm. uh, with the coin, we actually try to to create an object and buy or sell a way into the art by look. We made a coin. Our face is on there. Uh, you are. An, uh, it's a biannual. You are you know, uh, mm. visitors, so you see this, this is art, yes, and then this becomes an art object all of a sudden, and mm -hmm. that's what, what we were interested in. And now we continue a step, like, how can we now monetize this artwork we, we made out of mm. nothing? Like, how can we uh, sell it, let's mm -hmm. say, or how can we get, get what we think is fair back for it? Mm -hmm. Because I think we, we are not with a gallery or mm -hmm. something, so we don't have, mm -hmm. like... We, I mean, like we could try to put it on eBay, but I don't think anybody would mm -hmm. ever buy it. So we're just 
trying to find and a way. And he says that what would be the motive of the people to invest in mm. it, which is actually what we have problem with. And that's not the motive, but I think yeah. uh, to try to situate what are the, the, the terms of that exchange. Yeah. If I, am I buying this artwork? Which, okay, someone could yeah. buy this artwork for X amount of money, and that's the value of an artwork determined yeah. by whatever, whatever terms it de determine. Uh, or I can, or then it's like this uh, idea of support, or like solidarity, or I want to help yeah. you guys, and then I just yeah. support We're you. We're still that way. So thinking about that. Interesting to think what are the terms so of that. We, we had like an idea. W we were thinking about it was so somehow to make this this this, this uh, bonds you buy mm. to make them very nice mm. and to have them kind of like as a um, as a yeah as a Pokemon card or something mm. that like a rich lawyer can have it in his like. Next to his uh, diplomas, he can have like, I am part of this and this and this artwork, mm. you know, like I have this and this uh, parts in my collection, and mm. they're just like diplomas actually. And then he has also ex real works, but that these kind of things could be collected. And I and guess actually, that's a, a, um, a technique or I don't know something, an intervention that could be reproduced, and we were actually think that maybe it would be more clear to do this project as a as a parasitical project on other people's mm -hmm. artworks, you know? So actually <coughs> what we're producing is kind of an intervention in how on the way, you know, artworks are, are sold and actually these bonds, which is the secondary artwork on top of that is our artwork, but we start with an initial artwork that can be from somebody else. But how is it different than having many editions yeah. that are sold for cheap for an artwork. Yeah, that's not so different. But you, mm. you can't always make editions. Like, for instance, mm. we are, are this, I mean, yeah, yeah not yeah. every project mm. just mm. is. If, if, I mean, imagine it's a performance or something. You can sell a performance which has no tactile object. You can't sell a performance or you, mm. or you I don't know, you create some, yeah. If you sell a video, then you put it online. Yeah, oh, but like, you, like when oh, fate moves and from, for the, you know, you have like a lot of works which are just like you walk a line in the grass. That's your work. You can't sell this, but you can yeah. sell it. A trace, okay. you uh, like a, a bond from it, like. Mm -hmm. a and the, I, I think we're experiencing yeah. lots of works nowadays that is hard to put in an exhibition or hard to, you know, then it's. It's more uh, nice to, to hear maybe about them or, you know, like something very immaterial or to experience them. Yes, but very I don't think, do you think that people really would pay for immaterial things? Maybe that's the, uh, that to have that's a paper. A question, yeah. I mean, I, it's only I three euros or something. And I think, I think I would. But why is it material? You, uh, yeah. You can also resell them, of course. Eh? We, we, we are not excluding the fact that there can be a black market to resell these things. Like you can, you can collect your, you, you, you can collect real object art. You can collect bonds from from mm. non object art, mm. and these bonds you can you can sell them. I think them. you know a motive for that would be that if, you want. if we want this project to be super successful and make lots of money from it. I think it could work if we had really famous artists included, you know, mm -hmm. so like then you buy a bond from I don't know whom for like super cheap and then you're somehow part of a secondary artwork produced based on, but th then it's again the same system, very similar system to, to the blue chip uh, uh, world of art, you know, where the, the value of the artist depends on on whom he's exhibiting with, or who, which collectors bought, bought him, and so on. So we're actually reinventing a system that works in a very similar way. I don't way. think yeah. it's what probably when you don't it's do it with famous card. people, or yeah. some people would be just something happening yeah. in a really austere yeah. world of Lucy. Like ourselves that really understand what it is, it wouldn't. I I'm not sure, but I mean, I even made the the. Sometimes people don't even went to to pay five euros to go to an exhibition, so let alone yeah. paying five. But I think it yeah. would be like really a kind of a in. No but I mean, there. it's the same with Pokemon cards. You know, who, yes. who the hell buys Pokemon cards? The, you you create markets for every for everything. Yeah, and I guess we can try it, and 
Yeah, it's true. You, you want to create a market. I mean, it's you a, it's want a, to create a market. Yeah. Because I'm it's very confused. confused yeah. Because so yeah. much has yeah. been put on the table that yeah. I'm getting confused. Mm -hmm. So you want to create a market. It's a fictitious narrative, like any fictitious narrative. Yeah, yeah. still, but you want to create a market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. So that's why you want to sell idea. these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also this bond. Or okay, now it's getting a little bit like. Uh, Clear. Is it connected to? Is it still connected to something else that has a value that fluctuates? And because if I have a share of some kind of company or something, then I, it's this investment where I, I mm -hmm. care. Then how it changes mm -hmm. over time or whatever. But is that I, for you like someone buying this share, for example? Would that do you imagine that would be the final destination of this transaction, or is it still something that? Of course, I you mean, can exchange as a Pokemon card. Or exactly, yeah. I mean, th this are you buy a share of somebody who did a performance. Mm -hmm. Maybe after ten years, this person has become really famous. Yeah. You can sell that share. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. sell that share for like more money that you bought it for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You create mm -hmm. a, a, mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. not, it's not an alternative mm -hmm. market. You actually create the exact same art market, <laughs> just mm -hmm. instead of having like only uh, like uh, objects. You can also do. There's the uh, yeah. mysterious uh, mystery postcard or the invisible postcard. I don't remember the name. It's a show that's been going on at the RCA in uh, London for years and years and years. And they have very famous artist graduates that donate postcard size pieces. And then you go on the wall, they are all turned upside down. You have pieces from students and pieces from super famous mm -hmm. artists. And then you go, you pay five uh, pounds for the postcard, and you don't know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take one from the um, wall. Mm -hmm. And then people, you know, turn it around, and it's a Chapman piece, Ch Chapman Brothers piece. Immediately, the next day, it goes on Christie's, sell for 5,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds. Nobody keeps it. <laughs> Nobody keeps the famous pieces. They immediately, like, <laughs> you go on Christie's sale or Sotheby's, I don't know, and you see, like, postcards. <laughs> there is like the, the high value dates when you have the whole collection of all the postcards. Yeah. And, and that would be like the real. And this is like value. the nice thing about the lottery because you pay into the future potential and the narrative that is built around something that the thing that you actually invest in. Mm -hmm. By the way, in, a, in Spain they uh, auctioned yeah. off a house yeah. in the lottery and they had to really uh, research the legalities of this. Yeah. They yeah. kind of had to find a loophole. Yeah. I don't know uh, the real legal structure of this, but it, I think that's it's one of the interesting yeah. It's different per country, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, we were hoping that under the, the cover of an art project you can get away with that. Uh, but but it would be interesting to talk to yeah. someone who understands the tax mm -hmm. legalities yeah, of this, yeah. because yeah. the tax legalities and the border yeah. nations and all this kind yeah. of I, I things possible, that kind of underline the market story is the most then you can ask donations and then people can donate we already talked about it a little bit yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a no but then we have to uh, have a board of, of seven people mm -hmm. in order to start this line yeah. But, but I think it's yeah. important also like, to define like what you want to create that market in which kind of like social values like you want because if at the end like the thing is like to make like a, a parallel or, or market inside of the market that repeats the same kind of uh, structure mm -hmm. and the same kind of uh, unfair uh, treats uh, doesn't make sense I guess like yeah. like it's also important like to for me at least like to understand and define the, the project which kind of social values, which kind of ethics, like, would you incorporate mm -hmm. in that kind of uh, market? Like, uh, I mean, like, you're talking also, like, about, like, serving and property, yeah. like, how that works, like, effectively. Yeah. Because yeah. if at the end it's, like, the, the same thing, like, with, uh, with, uh, with the lottery, and then you sell, mm -hmm. if it's from yeah. someone famous, at the end it's, like, yeah. the same kind it's of the thing. the same thing, exactly. yeah. Yes. Exactly. And, and that, of course, it's doable, but... So uh, that's exactly actually our problem at this point because we really started to, uh, with ma in mind that we can create something you know different and it can be based upon different social values and yeah. etc. But then whatever we think, it comes back mm -hmm. you know uh, and in in the same and the same mm -hmm. actually w what we want to avoid. Mm -hmm. We're it's just in a way we're creating a new gallery of some mm. sort that, that also has a specific economic model about which can be something very interesting indeed but that's not our initial motive either yeah. 
But probably it could be something that is um, do you talk with the fictional collective yes, already? Yeah. Like because they invented kind of a system where it's based, it's kind of an exchange system where which is what are the credit points? It's kind of two bank of values. Bank of yes, but they have um, like the when you pay with trust coins. And you get back some like skills or something, mm -hmm. and they um, developed it to the point that you kind of have credit cards or yeah. shared accounts where um, gallery owners can book artists and pay them via the and if. Um, you, we or you invent the system like that, but that still is kind of interchangeable or changeable mm -hmm. or convertible into money. This would be very interesting. I think when you have kind of a, yeah. of a parallel system that works in kind of the world like where are we now. working in like independently but we still could go, go or to a bank and mm -hmm. give them the thing and they convert it into to money and we can go like for example like yes. the people in, so. in Catalonia like uh, people of the um, uh, Cooperativa Integral Catalana uh, they have been creating this like fair coin, like yeah. based more or less like with uh, like, like the Bitcoin, but yeah. like incorporating uh, like more social. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. does it work? Yeah, I didn't read much about it, but uh, I just read like two paragraphs uh, of this guy uh, that expropriate the money of the banks. Oh, yeah. uh, that I don't remember now of his name. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, not it's hiding, Nuria. right? Yeah, Nuria's well uh, friends. Then mm. uh, not his name. Um, yeah, but, but they are like working in this kind of other coin, like to try to uh, to avoid like some problems that it was with the Bitcoin, mm. and it's also like being collated like uh, uh, all these like Integra cooperatives that they are like trying like, to to work with, uh, yeah, with more sustainable practices, but uh, mm. like in all the aspects of life. Uh, he, he, I mean, he was putting that, like an example, like, like when not not uh, with a coin, but when they were promoting like the cooperative, like they were traveling like through all Catalonia by bike, like to promote the project. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's like maybe just like a detail and anecdote, but also like says a lot about like how to think the practices of of uh, delivering information, like how they were changing like the the, the things like also in this kind of maybe small details of. Uh, producing the things that could be so it's like a bitcoin but w with more elaborated social mm -hmm. ethics mm -hmm. yeah. and is it it's called the fair coin fair yeah. coin yeah. Yeah. the Robin Hood guys yeah. wanted yeah. to invest in this yeah. and cooperate and also mm -hmm. telecom yeah. was yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, if I would put it down on simple very simple words and if I were in your position I would kind of need to uh, choose between two uh, solutions and the one would be to go more for a symbolic provocative project and then kind of go speculating without worrying too much if it would work or not because you would create your narrative mm -hmm. and the other solution that uh, you are more familiar with, uh, at least for sure for, for Valentina with the work that you've done, would be to kind of create a platform and to kind of focus on the common space, the perspective. And then you could perhaps also, I mean, you, you read this um, article that I posted today on Facebook. Um, yes, I wanted yeah. to, make, to bring it yeah, to the table, actually. Kind of bringing in this new idea of how um, Airbnb would be like if the municipality could kind of take over and then this kind of new co-ownership with the inhabitants could come out. Yeah. And then if you could kind of imagine how something like this would be coming from the arts, with a different model of art market, it cannot be an art market. Mm -hmm. That would be for me another direction that I could see. I think that if you play in between, and you are very worried about would it work, will they buy, will they blah, 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 yeah. you might 
being lost in, you yeah. know, yeah, you know in words yeah. that should not yeah. be the focus of your... Yeah. Yeah. But also probably work with, like, if you really want to think about the market, really, like, work with economists, like, like get together a team of people, because I feel like we can talk, guys, but none of us is expert in anything, and I feel sometimes uh, alienated, to be honest, because I feel like... What I, have, I mean, how can I talk about something that I, I, I cannot pretend that I fully understand? And I feel like if you really have that desire to think about a market, you really have to get together a team of people who can really design with you something. Like, otherwise, you will get lost in kind of discussion that go nowhere. To, like, I don't want to be destructive, but, and I don't want to kill the conversation, but I feel... That's, That's um, an, another part we're actually doing. Like uh, next week, we will have uh, our first. We have such a, because it's also important to figure out what of what such an economist could be like. You know, you don't want an economist who is in a totally different mindset either because that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we are in contact with uh, Ma Max Haven, which uh, is a young guy, and he also teaches actually at the art school. And, uh, but he's an economist by training and he's also an activist so I think it's a good yeah, um, exactly. profile kind of, of a like person a transdisciplinary kind of like yeah. figures mm -hmm. that have an understanding and but uh, they also know what they're talking about yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, exactly like to how to really you know go from theory into the actual design of such a thing is really difficult, you know, because we really, yeah, we, we just know this way, and to think of another way is, is um, Yeah, but the moment easy. that you say maybe, like, a, you know, a few words, I think the person who is skilled in something, and that's, I, I'm not <laughs> saying when people are skilled, maybe help, because then immediately can maybe that thing that for you, that it doesn't make sense to you, might kind of, you know, ring a bell. Mm -hmm. And that and say, oh, I have this example. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy when you have examples, because uh, when it gets too abstract, I understand yeah. we yeah. are floating and going in many directions. Yeah. Maybe I think it would be interesting for us. I don't know, maybe, I, I, but, but it, maybe discuss that kind of, I don't know, the, the aspect of like okay, terminologies or maybe things that we are able to contribute to. Like okay, you have that. I, I like. I like a market for material value. What do we mean with that? Maybe this is something that we could discuss because we might mm -hmm. have the skill to discuss that. But when it comes to economy, to be honest, guys, no, I have no did skills and I don't feel I can contribute. Mm -hmm. did, did, you, did you look for some examples like of, of economies of immaterial practices? And also that, mm -hmm. like it's immaterial value, immaterial practices. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the name just sounded good, you know. <laughs> 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 Maybe it will change. That's a good starting point. And we're kind of skilled in inventing good names, you know. That, that's our uh, <laughs> that's our currency. <laughs> yeah, I think the name does a good job in uh, unlinking skills and uh, income. And that's kind of like the starting point of this discussion, right? Is we need we need to find a different system that doesn't link our skills with our income. But my problem with that starting point a little bit is like what happens to identity when you you as a creative can no longer like build your identity on the practice that you do, or the fact that uh, people tell you go get another job as an artist if you don't like uh, not being paid is like your immediate response is. I don't want to do anything else. This is what I am. And there's a whole kind of market of identity that is linked with this creative economy uh, that is driven by the market economy because of cities development and because of whatever. Um, and the idea of like unlinking it through, maybe, uh, maybe it's not going to end up being a market, but yeah. I think this... Can, can we invent another name for... But I, think, but I think the connection between immaterial and like value it. is very, very important. <laughs> but it's not actually decoupling. 
because immaterial value as immaterial immediately like rings with uh, immaterial labor, which is the mode of production today, which mm-hmm. couples skills and like or couple to use Vino, like political action and labor together. So actually, this is not an, an uncoupling. If we uh, take for granted that, that we are living in a time of kind of immaterial labor, what the, more, the form of labor is immaterial. Mm-hmm. For me, that w- wouldn't be an uncouple, like an, a way of uncoupling, because it, of the I have a problem with the immaterial also. Mm. And the market. Mm. No, the mar- the market. No, it's perfect. Poor the value. market is beautiful. <laughs> if you com. think like uh, the market Forest. in the <laughs> Renaissance time, the market, the brace, the mercantancia, boccaccio. This is a beautiful. The market, I think, as a concept, is incredibly interesting. I have a problem with the material because it brings back to the idea of immaterial labor, uh, which in fact is not immaterial at all. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. Well, for, for me, I, I think that it also it uh, directly links to material labor, and I read it as such, as an ironic title, mm. uh, kind yeah. of addressing immaterial labor, like how you measure this value, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, it has this problematic, you know, like... It's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. It's almost exactly. a mocking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you are right. I totally... But that's also, I, I mean, what Daphne said before, whether you're doing this project more in a provocative way mm. without really trying to figure out a specific model that's scalable <coughs> and can be yeah. used for, by anyone, everywhere, whatever, yeah. Yeah. or if it's more, yeah. This is a big we, question. We yeah. started doing yeah. th- that, you know, mm. and, but that's what we did also the first time, and then we got also this critique. And also for us, it would be much more interesting to actually do something that does something you know because you always get this question ah oh, great and now what you know, you know it's like and, 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 and what did you do it's like uh, I don't know. And then you did something already yeah, yeah. yeah. there is a really yeah. big ambiguity in this putting a value on doing yeah. something yeah. especially yeah. when I mean in the art uh, world maybe not the market only discourse and commentary yeah. has such a big yeah. value yeah, of course. Some part of the art world is about more that than actually selling artworks. Like the, the, the cultural discourse that goes along yeah. with the art, yeah. especially in the contemporary art scene. So that's already, I mean, I'm not saying that's good value necessarily, but, yeah, but that's <laughs> you already have yeah. that value in your work. I think. Yeah. But that's why we want to, True, we wanted to experiment with many and have like the lottery, and it's like, yeah. it's, not, it's not the best and the right way, but it's so, it's. You know, it's worth trying, and yeah. you can have a discussion about it, and that discussion is the work. I mean, that's yeah. the and maybe also to show mm-hmm. all these different uh, pathways that we do. You know, to trying to to get away from what we already know, and maybe failing all the time to produce something new. Maybe that's also something interesting. But probably the first thing yeah. would really simply be have a new vocabulary. A new term, <laughs> a terminology. <laughs> no, not simple, yeah. but like yeah. a really basic yeah. one. Because mm-hmm. everyone, there are many initiatives or people are uh, talking about creating new system mm-hmm. for exchange. It's always like the first terms are really used very uh, indifferently. Like value, there's value and worth, yeah, yeah. and worth and value are totally different, yeah. and it's kind of. And yes, probably it's kind of the first step towards yeah. really developing something that can be real sometime to think about the uh, language in which to, to talk mm. about it or in which to, um, to kind of evaluate and, and evaluate our outputs in a different way as well yeah. I don't know probably it's just and to to communicate as well what we are doing and what yeah. we are thinking of um, just like everyone is a curator and everyone but what, what are we in the end what is the thing that mm-hmm. that we want to be like valued for or paid for or Probably, 
Yeah, it's so, it's so difficult also yes, to coin a new term, you know. It is, but it's kind of a... But it's going to be interesting, yeah. But it's also, more, if you look for instance at the existing projects, like time banks, all these projects, and you see what they have been doing and how, and then how you kind of know, think about that, what you can take from, mm. the, from the existing thing and what you just, uh, turn, like... It doesn't make it sense, mm -hmm. any sense for you. I think this is already a way of kind of building a glossary. If you mm -hmm. like start looking at the existing, what is the existing? Also, this idea of selling kind of certificates. This mm -hmm. is not like and has been going on for a long time. And then, mm -hmm. if you look at the different example, maybe it's easier to kind of develop your own vocabulary out of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, also it's maybe no. good to, to but you know, also maybe it's like as Federici does, like it's maybe good also like to look at the economies that they are not the capitalistic one, like mm -hmm. like find like uh, models, I mean because now capitalism yeah. uh, it's supposed to be everywhere. Uh, but then there are like another economies that they can bring another terminology as well. Mm -hmm. And also like another ways of interchange or uh, yeah. like this yeah. in value. Yeah. I mean, it depends how much time you have mm. to develop the project. <laughs> well, this residency is only for two months. You have to define these immaterial values somehow. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, absolutely. What is the art? I mean, the more the value of uh, the what the art market values is uh, individual artworks and the artists as brands, and there is concrete mm. values on this. But uh, you want to promote probably some other mm. values. Yeah. So this could be the somehow the, the intervention is very simple, yes. but you know the, the I think you need to define this. Mm. I mean, also for me, otherwise also not for immaterial value. It's like you could also like say that's the, that's what I tried to say in the beginning. Like that is how the, the financial system works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it is a market for <laughs> immaterial. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, you know, strategically perhaps use that and make it work for other values that you define. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now probably people, it's I'm just like, the, prob if people buy artworks mm -hmm. or works or they, they really pay the things that they know that they can pay for, probably because they really don't know what we would like to be paid for. So probably it would be a really, yes, as you said, like a really... What would you like to be paid for? <laughs> <laughs> I actually... Like <laughs> honestly, I honestly, didn't like have to be paid for, paid for anything. You know, I feel always so ashamed <laughs> <laughs> for getting paid, or so. Oh no, I have to fill more stupid papers. You know, like it's such a boring part of life. While there is so much many more interesting <laughs> activities <laughs> to spend my time to. So you so like to be paid for them, probably. For the actual no, I like to share with money team. on my bank account <laughs> <laughs> without having to think how much I spend and not, not knowing how they are yeah. getting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this possible? Well, <laughs> <laughs> free money. <laughs> that would be my. Uh, so that would be a mid the class <laughs> <laughs> response <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think if you come from the different, <laughs> you have a little bit more problem with that, but. What do you mean? Well, I think uh, there is a value. I think it's true that you, I, I also experienced that, like this kind of shame of asking for money. But I also realized that when you need money, and and, and and when you realize, like, you know, all that the investment in what you are doing, I think, uh, it, like, then you stop being ashamed. Yeah. Because if you, I don't know, if you wake up at six thirty in the morning and you go and and then you, you I don't know, you. Just are you calling you your work is a, like I don't know whatever work anyway like mm -hmm. you work these hours and you get back home super tired and uh, and you fucking want to be paid because you have to pay the rent because maybe you have children because maybe you have a wife and so you, then you stop being ashamed of that so I feel like being ashamed is a problem 
when it comes to money mm-hmm. because we also have to understand that we do it's not you do a thing for free because actually I mean there are needs and uh, and you also invest your time and energies and intellect or well, whatever I mean, I don't want to sound like a moralist. I mean, I'm also middle class. I always say like that. But also, I'm ashamed of asking money. In a way, but then you realize how stupid you. that yeah, is. So after a point, you don't do it. I think it's also a matter of an age and of how, you know, you become experienced with things. Because after a point, you say, okay, that's somehow, it doesn't work that way. And yeah. why, why on earth you should be ashamed? Yeah, exactly. You're investing no, no, your time uh, and your work I'm, and it's I'm the system that has created this kind yeah, of yeah, exactly. idea in your head. But no, probably you right, have to have really like define for yourself which things that you really want to, because I, I think I'm always working for free as well. But be, just because I I just violated it in another dimension or uh, and I really have kind of of my own rules for which I ask yeah. for what I ask money and for what not. And I think it's kind of a of a good system, or I find the system for myself that escapes no, uh, yeah. to to yeah. because I don't think there were all those models of artist strikes and visions of mm-hmm. artists just not working anymore. Mm-hmm. And but I think it would be kind of a form of strike, probably. Um, as well, or if we just stop to 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 call the things that we we are doing kind of now, if we stop to to call it work or other things like that, it's kind of a refusal to work as well. Hmm. Yeah, but I think in just in this like artist strike of the neo east and all these people, and that was an artwork. And yes. what they did, it was like, I'm going to stop to do art. Mm-hmm. And, then, and that was an artwork. So, so mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like kind of, uh, I mean, you can make a strike, uh, but since you are an artist, that it's going to be part of the work anyway. Yes, no, so I'm not <laughs> totally just, uh, not for a strike to, uh, because it's kind of. Your job. Would there be. Sorry. Go back to this immaterial oh, value. Yeah. If we don't think about it via as immaterial labor directly, uh, would it make sense to think about value uh, that cannot be translated into something outside of mm-hmm. itself? So, mm-hmm. a value actually that's not in the market. So it's not there's no exchange. So because I don't know this even like this bo- this uh, shares or whatever you were saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they if there's an idea that they can be exchanged for something or they can I mean can you cash out at some if point and fungible, get get your money back or like the worth of it? You probably cannot, but. Maybe there's a way to think about immaterial value as a value that cannot then, it's what it is, but then cannot, yeah, it cannot, it's not a currency, it, it cannot be translated into something else. Also it looks like, like so mm-hmm. you mean not to translate them into money? Yeah, into money or into other, I mean, if it's not exchange, is that, because I don't know what immaterial value can be, but Maybe value that cannot, maybe something that cannot be exchanged. But that yeah. sounds, sounds yeah. like something like, like, for instance, university or mm. like a master or something like mm. that. You put money there, like you get like the material, mm. you know, the knowledge, mm. um, and then it's supposed that with that title, then like you can get a job and bring the money back you were paying like, for your education. But that's that's investment. That's investment. Yeah. You are strategic. Yeah, but also like it's, you are putting money that mm. it's supposed that it's going to come back uh, with a surplus. Yes, like yeah. But it doesn't come back. Mm. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before it was supposed <laughs> that it was going to work like that a few years ago. But you see, it's a really like, tricky, it's a kind of mm. interesting uh, thinking about uh, this aspect of like something that cannot be translated into an exchangeable thing. Because at the same time, I don't know, uh, sorry, today I'm, I'm totally to be not obsessed, but if, if you think about kind of a Marx idea of like the kind of a pr- like, a, like a work that um, um, has an end and is a, an object, mm. right, as, a, as its end, so like, I don't know, as a um, writer and make a book. And then there is another type of kind of labor that doesn't produce 
right? A and a book, but it's a, it, 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 let's say, it, it's called, it's kind of its own fulfillment as a, like a beam work, mm. right? So it doesn't have an object. Mm. Is it, that's mm. why, you know, the post office yeah. came yeah. with this mm. idea of immater immaterial mm. labor, right? Because it's precisely that work that doesn't have, that is virtuoso work, mm. that doesn't have an outcome. And so in that sense, I would see this kind of immaterial mm. value as precisely symptomatic of an entire kind of system where, where work doesn't have, doesn't necessarily have a, an output, mm -hmm. but it's just like a performance. But where is that value then situated? Or what carries that value? What? What carries that value in that I mean... The, in the case of the, of course, of the virtuoso, the virtuoso carries its own value. And it is its his or her performance. But it's usually then it's translated value. into a book, let's say. So Not necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily. It can be a performance that needs witnesses. Yeah. If I play a uh, score, right? Yeah. Like yeah. a Vino example. Yes, yes, yeah. You play, and yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And, and you don't sell the score because the score can be reproduced, mm. but what you give, what you share, mm. is this kind of performance, mm. and you need witnesses, which is also an interesting I thing, mm. because it links them to the question of value and witnessing, and how you create yeah. the common. <coughs> Where in, yeah. Mm. The thing is that uh, unavoidably, when you refer to this paradigm of Virno, uh, you easily link it up to immaterial labor today, and you can say that we're all doing virtuosic activities on Facebook. Of we're course. all being observed, we're point. all being, yeah, so we're all kind of yeah. producing our. So yeah. somehow, I think if you kind of take this path, then you have to address a very Everything. big. <laughs> yeah, which are also, of course, very interesting questions, but I think you might be ending up. Why do you Maybe then the question is like, how mm -hmm. does that value comes back to us, you know, or to yeah. people align yeah. us yeah. to somebody else? Should what if there would be a possibility to uh, externalize again something that, mm -hmm. that, that according to post for this kind of production cannot be externalized because it's the performance itself. Mm -hmm. So you don't mm -hmm. have any outcome. Right? It's just communication, it's enough. Not that things are not produced, things are still produced, but there is a lot of work that happen on the level of kind of mm -hmm. just politicians, exactly. politician level. Mm -hmm. and, and the interesting thing for me would be how you re, that's why I hate uh, immaterial, mm -hmm. because for me then the question would be how do you re externalize? Mm -hmm. How do you create a situation material. and materialize it again mm -hmm. in another form? In, in, in the moment of commonality and creating the common. Yeah, Pasquinelli would help. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a thought. That's why I feel maybe I'm fixated with mm -hmm. this thing, but... It yeah, no, I just see the, the problem that what could not be measured to the period that, let's say, Bruno was talking about, yeah. uh, can definitely be measured today. And this kind of change is uh, very interesting and very problematic at the same time. So um, I, I, I really get a bit lost if I try to get in your place to see how... I mean, mm. I understand what you're saying about how you make the step back, but I can't uh, kind of uh, think about it realistically, how it could work. Yeah, but you see, I, the, like uh, as a as an audience, mm. and as a let's say like uh, like an art audience, if I go somewhere and see a project that is called Market for Immaterial mm. Labor, like to be honest, in material labor, you also have to think that mm. you link it mm. to a particular also uh, discourse. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like I mean, this is also it, it doesn't have to be like that, yes. yeah. but I think it can, and I'm just pointing to mm. that mm. Uh, mm. aspect. Mm. whether you want to address it or not and if you don't want to address it then you have to say why you mm. don't you have to make clear this is not what we are talking about mm -hmm. yeah, it, it really yeah. came from this coin thing no like mm. we have these discussions we, we create a little booklet which uh, mm. which is these discussions and then we create a, a, an object just for the sake of having this object that the art market asks because you can't uh, is immaterial, right? Is all the immaterial value and the commodity is the, is the artwork. Mm -hmm. And how can we, s m yeah, 
yeah, put okay, the value straight into the work. Back, yeah. Yeah. back yeah. into the work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you're trying to think where it is now. Maybe mm-hmm. the the whole discussion of the surplus could be helpful. Yeah. I think that's what mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. What, that's what yeah. this ends up just yeah, translating into. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But then you're trying to also monetize or not monetize but yeah, translate the surplus back into like the We we had ship, like yeah. the first idea for a website we had like you have the gold price, the current mm-hmm. gold price fluctuating and you have all the stocks of the of the coin because the coin mm-hmm. is split in stocks, the stocks are sold, they're publicly sh- shared and, and resold on the website for surplus value each time and this would be tracked so you have the gold price and you have the art value price and then you have a gap in between which is art value right which mm-hmm. is what are people paying extra mm-hmm. for for this but it's it's somehow n- n- not so strong and, and we thought for some reason I don't remember no what do you do with that yeah. maybe <laughs> how do you translate it in something that could make sense for your practice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like yeah, it's a bad, I mean, if you if you want to say <coughs> sell it and make money, then it's not very difficult. You have a gallery because yeah. you can find a like, thousand of ways of translate mm-hmm. uh, into objects and, yeah. and sell them. Yeah. Like it's like, like for example, I mean, if you, you can make the, this uh, thing that you were saying, you you could print in there for some time, and that's the, yeah. the sculpture yeah. or the whatever you want to have. Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, like then like the problem. It's again not there. It's like if you want like to create mm-hmm. all the position towards that like mm-hmm. that value and also like how if it is uh, like a personal position on that is something that is uh, useful also like for the people that's something that we are not talking here that mm-hmm. we talk uh, mm-hmm. all the days no mm-hmm. like if you want to create like a methodology that could be also like used uh, by other people like an open like source uh, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, for instance, or mm-hmm. uh, yeah, or you want to create this kind of community, like you need also like to create a market uh, that they like everyone can profit uh, this like research and practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's also uh, mm-hmm. like which kind of platform or community or uh, commonality like you can like come up, uh, from their own. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's why we decided to make this discussion so much pleasant part of this plan. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. this website is not just yeah. a, a market anymore, it's, it's more like a platform. Mm-hmm. And also through these discussions we're having, we, we also kind of want to build alliances with like mm-hmm. now w- what we're doing now with you, you know, so yeah. that maybe only like this we can start creating a common base and try to, you know, coin new terms even about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a process. Can, can we get a good deal afterwards on the... We can invest, but we have You're to get building exactly. network value here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a way we do, but wha- what can we do with it, you know? We can give shares away, shares <laughs> of what that we still have to work. <laughs> yeah, in the, in, the, in the beginning we were thinking, okay, we can collaborate with an economist, then mm-hmm. we can pay mm-hmm. him back in, in the stock, you know, or on the other. Why can't you have to sell these conversations? Like, they can be highly... <laughs> 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 kind of unru- nobody has access to them directly, and, you know, they could have so many <laughs> secrets with artists, theorists, economists... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's true to find. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. we can send them with you know with a CD or something so that they cannot be tracked hey. Hey, by the NSA. Self-serving so. yeah, you can listen to it yeah. once in a while. But something that is just because um, that that was really made me kind of really happy when when I met Ethel uh, last week and she said we were ta- talking about that this is work project where she uh, contributed to for free mm-hmm. in the precarious project she said you know what that ha- that was so um, valuable for me because you offered us the possibility to rethink and um, our own project and kind of reframe it in the framework of your project and that was more worth to me than just getting 100 euros or something 
So it's about personal um, value in a way. Yes, I, I don't say it should be about just only, but like a way to interact or act on those uh, platforms or uh, if you're talking about like building up something and sharing something and mm -hmm. all is personal. No, but there is also yeah. commonly accepted value, otherwise why do we agree Yeah, because your identity money? is constructed on commonly acceptable yeah. ideas. Exactly. But all value is personal. I mean, it's personal gain. Mm -hmm. That's the whole system. Market for personal value. It sounds <laughs> like... <really> yeah, <laughs> that would be fantastic. I like market for personal value. It's it really sounds evil amazing. somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that would be some market. Impersonal. I will like uh, no, no, personal. No, no, very, 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 very personal. personal. Mm -hmm. like, what Just does that make Christian actually? <laughs> yeah, but the personal value would be to break the system. Yeah. Yeah. Because it also sounds very useless to the current. System. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, let's say, for example, that you want to have like an autocracy, or you want to have like more like a the like open uh, kind of economy that you can like trade with people out of this market, like with kind of translations or, or trading that you can do. If it's just like just looking into the community and the kind of change or change that you can mm. make inside, or if you want like to make a way that you can like, like sell the goods from the community like to the so outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that's also something that maybe to, to think about. But like maybe that's a, uh, to me that's a really a next step, you know. Yeah. First, you really have to build a community because yeah. actually, exactly because everything is personal and we are trained to to have like commonly accepted values, just like we did mm. with money or mm. whatever, mainly money, I would say. How can you uh, create a parallel system to that uh, where maybe not the whole world ag agrees, but there is a certain community of number of people yeah. agreeing on that, you know, so that it becomes something. Otherwise, it's something between just me and Peter. Yeah, but for example, like, like, yeah. like in the yeah. in the things we do, like for instance tonight, like the affective label, then it's very important as well. Yeah. So like, I mean, like we are here because we like you and. Yeah. to like us, you know, and there's like these kind of complicities that they are like extremely important. It's like at the end, like then it's like also perverse as uh, uh, you were saying before, uh, because that shows like uh, what is like, uh, like capitalism, it's like profiting from too, like yeah. all these kind of like affective moments. But yeah. at the same time, uh, that's, uh, I don't know if you've been following in, in Spain what was happening. Now it's like all these like, the elections uh, in all the municipalism in all the cities, uh, they have been like having very good results, uh, not but not in the communities. Like all these like post fifteen and proposals, mm -hmm. and I think like it's because in the in the cities themselves there is like these like bodies together, but while in the communities it's more abstract like, this kind of uh, connection. So this kind of presence of bodies together yeah. is like something like it's extremely not only the affection that could be in the social media Absolutely. Like no I just don't want it just I wanted I was playing the other side yeah. because I think also the celebration <laughs> of the of the <laughs> of the effective yeah, as yeah, oh yeah. let's be together it's like a uh, you know hippie thing you feel like no this is yeah. exactly how it works so I was just mm -hmm. trying to play the other side yeah, but yeah. The no no it's I mean it's important like to understand that uh, like together with the conflicts because also the yeah. Yeah, that's a big problem. Also, like collectivities, it's always like a panacea of everything. Like if something doesn't work, let's make a collective, and then it's going to work. Absolutely. And probably it's going to be like something very great. That at the end, like it doesn't really, it's not not satisfactory, uh, hundred percent for anyone. And that. Yeah. But it's also, we shouldn't forget that we are also playing, each of us is playing, oh, I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe, I, I could, I'm sorry, I, I cannot talk about it like for everybody, but I think we are all also playing some certain roles. Mm -hmm. It's not that we are only here, because because mm -hmm. I also feel like the problem with, as, uh, often uh, in the arts 
is that there is this kind of constant confusion between like what is personal and what is professional, what is friendship and what is professional, like yeah. like being together as a professionals and not someone who, for instance, like I mean I don't think like but it just. Like they, 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 Valentina and I are friends mm -hmm. because we share certain things, but we also don't know each other mm -hmm. and we don't know, she doesn't know my life, I don't know yeah. her life, so we cannot pretend that um, that here we are talking as a, like a friends who know each other, mm -hmm. who share things. It's also a particular context mm -hmm. in which, of course, my skills, my, uh, we share something mm -hmm. and we also have to understand what is this something. Because I think this is also very, very important because otherwise you have all the what's uh, uh, psycho psychopathologies mm -hmm. of capitalism <laughs> to quote Warren. Mm -hmm. That is basically like when you cannot n anymore kind of understand what are you, sh what is the common, what is your limit mm -hmm. within a group, within a common, what are you giving, what are you taking, where are you? And what kind of relationships and are you built social yes, relations yes, are you building? Exactly. That's uh, I mean, I think that you are putting there. Uh, that's also why I was th thinking about autocracy because it's like important, like to define limits, like in which kind of limits? Because those limits also are the the ones like uh, then like talks about the transactions. In those limits, uh, mm -hmm. it's like where the transactions Absolutely. are happening. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I also was thinking about the common, like the other th mm -hmm. question that once you figure out is really how to present uh, present this work in a way that is also like it's shareable. Yeah. And in a way that it really creates a moment of kind of friction or, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you reach out. This is so important because I've realized that, for instance, I get bored, like when I see like things like uh, Anzan curating the the forensic exhibition i feel like the project is fantastic it, it's really really interesting but the way the mm -hmm. the work was shown and presented and like it was like totally saying no don't come it was kind of you know like not friendly not allow me to get in to enter that space so i think also like mm -hmm. uh, like the moment of reaching out and creating also a common that is outside this moment that we are sharing, but a common when you are going yeah. to present the work. This is also something that is incredibly important because that's the moment that you reach out I mean, and I you can really talk to people. Yeah, I, um, I think that's a really <coughs> important question, but uh, for the moment our concer concern on you know how to reach a bigger public, it, it manifests through this website, so uh, yeah. we don't think in terms of uh, spa spatial exhibition okay. of some sort, or like this is also a way to reach out, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know much more complicated and much more engaging, yeah. and maybe it reaches out to only a very tiny public every time. But we, uh, in a way, maybe it's not about uh, the numbers. Uh, but you are not going to present so anything. There is not going to be in the final exhibition. No, you we're going to present no. something. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And they so say okay. mysterious things to me. That okay. <laughs> somehow I will be implicated in something. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it will be material. <laughs> but of course, I mean, it's no, we have some ideas. For sure. Actually, we should maybe say that. I mean, your residence is research residency without any demand that okay. any production okay. should be produced, so to okay. speak. Yeah. But then there are other ideas and talks and yeah. so on. That's like something that's what drives us yeah. crazy. I think it's nice. It would be nice. Did you see the exhibition? And see what kind of feedback exactly. you get. It's not, it's not that there is no demand for us to do something, but it's always, <laughs> you know, you no, can always have to gratification yeah. to, you know, to yeah. what you're saying, reaching yeah. out and and um, so many curators here. <laughs> 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 Did no, you see uh, the Koki Tanaka exhibition? Because they, th he has his precarious practices, it's called, and he has, for example, five um, ceramic artists working together on Wend Peace. What is in the end the outcome that is um, tradable or sellable is the piece that comes out to the market, yeah. but the really important is the thing what they are talking about. 
So probably we have to kind of free us as well from the thought that we always have to kind of try to sell or explain or what we are talking about because in the end we don't even know or we are not sure we don't have solutions and people wait for solutions and but probably it could be another outcome like yeah. that that a symbolic kind of symbolic figurative easy perceivable thing that in the end is as well a result of our meetings yeah. or yeah. our but but how but the, in the yeah. immaterial <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well, that's how we're yeah. producing a podcast you know this is a lot about production yeah. at the same yes. time but it, it, it's something that could be so too More easy, easy yeah. And yeah. because we're not yeah. ready to to offer people which is um, because people, as soon as it's in a like environment of um, exhibition or a, um, expect solutions, so probably we just can keep the part, like the whole material part, just keep for us and transform it for us into something for the future and yeah. give the people choose some. Mm. But you don't easy. have to meet the expectation of the people. You can do something that doesn't meet you, you do the expectation if, if, if of the you, people. If you it's very hard to do that. Yes, it's extremely hard to do but that. But you yes. have to do that. Yes, you have. If you have your own, like, you know, you want to do in that direction, of course, you always want to, but you will never know. You would never yeah, know I if you are meeting mm -hmm. this. But if I write a text <laughs> and I just put it out there, it's that I publish you will never know <laughs> no, you know I cannot control it sometimes it's just too early <laughs> to, can to make it communicate feasible. things that are even not clear or are trying yeah. to, 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 to show things or talk about things where you don't even know yourself how yeah totally but how, so how was this communicated to you through this exhibition that that the Focus was not on the objects but on the conversation. You had uh, you had uh, you had uh, videos. Mm -hmm. The object was not there. No, the object. was not there. No, it was not. It's not the the just a literal. Like it, it just came to my mind yeah. when mm -hmm. I thought about you said yeah. like finding something like why are we here and why are we connecting okay we're not, not ceramic artists but I don't know mm -hmm. and that's no just we're just I, more thinking I, about, I, about this kind of idea that you can also create a situation because okay my problem is this um, uh, in the last like 10 years uh, the focus of a lot of artistic practice has been kind of less less and less about kind of the art the art object and more and more and more about the discourse, creating the discourse, discourse, discourse is everywhere. And I feel like we are losing a good opportunity thinking about this idea of a work without and like without outcome and a work with outcome. I feel like it's so important. Like I see, like curators who don't want to, like you know, in curatorial schools, who don't want to curate show, they refuse, they want to do part like a school. So produce content, yes. and I feel you're losing an opportunity to actually create a connection through something that is in space, mm -hmm. and where you the connection is not necessarily discursive, but it's on the level of mm -hmm. feeling, uh, of touching, of mm -hmm. like something that it's very physical. And I think this is an important uh, part. And I think as an artist, it's a big challenge, but it's also like a very productive moment when you think, how can I translate? that idea into a work that can communicate th th this idea well, it's with, uh, you know, and reach an audience uh, that can respond in many yeah. different ways. And I found, I find that moment very still like interesting. I like to work in an exhibition space and see works. Yeah, and I think it's important also in terms of temporality, because while, I mean, like, um, I mean, obviously, like, I don't think, like, it's possible anymore like to have access uh, completely uh, to all the parts of an hour because it's as we know made with all the conversations with yeah. big production etc around it uh, but what it 
can bring uh, an object, as it happened with the books, is like it stay in, in a connection, for example. I mean, it's like something that it stay through time. So like the temporality it contains, it's a very different when it's like this kind of process-based uh, conversation that we are doing a lot. But it's a meeting point. Yes, that's that, for that's me, why, yeah. that's, that you are not launching like this uh, thing to the future. And it's yeah. like uh, taking things from the past. So you are like yeah. making an inscription uh, in, in the possible temporal lines that could cross eventually the object. And, and that I think like it's something like conversations, even like if you record them, they are going to somehow like to disappear. Yeah. Because it's not possible like to have access like to two hours conversation and to keep all the conversations <laughs> all the time. But and also people would like like very, very nice yeah. idea, yeah. like a very like obvious kind of <laughs> nice thing <laughs> like to record <laughs> everything. Uh, but but I think like it's important like this moment also mm. because it's a like a sensual moment of encountering yeah. like an object that is uh, like about seduction. That probably yeah. like a documentary does about the budget. Now we're gonna make a split scouts <laughs> around the <laughs> budget. <laughs> you already that's already the idea. Anyway. Conclusion. No, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you, Federica. <laughs> no, Great I idea. Mean, exactly what you're in uh, connecting to what you're saying though is uh, I mean the regardless if anybody has access to this and listens to this conversation yeah. and the fact that you did it and that it was recorded that they will re exist as a data item the Transmedial will be able to state this took place that you will be able to state this took place that's already value that's captured yeah. it's Absolutely. captured before you even did it yeah. because it's part of how yeah. cultural production works today mm -hmm. so yeah. it's I think this itemizing and datafication <laughs> in a way of <laughs> cultural life in general that's uh, I don't know how to if you know, well, why can the market address that? Perhaps produce as little value as possible in this respect, you know, like, or mm -hmm. somehow create an anti value that <laughs> is then extremely valuable to culture. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, because mm -hmm. I think this process of capturing and this process also of discussing, like, we, when we very early on started to discuss, so what do you actually want to do? And, and uh, it's like this anxiousness. Mm -hmm. among us that what we would say here is might be useless because we don't know the goal of it how will it be captured and so on but this is misleading it's already value value it's trans it's digitized it's transformed it's documented so we can say whatever we like on this <laughs> conversation <laughs> i think <laughs> i mean <laughs> but then <laughs> there is the other song. then there is this yeah. other value <laughs> that you yeah. described that somehow of being in this situation and discussing these yeah. questions that we all somehow find really interesting yeah. uh, but that is not uh, that's but uh, but captured but i think there is like a very like interesting thing that you mentioned there is like the, the anxiety like of having like everything records and, and I think that that's like a very symptomatic and probably it's one of the reasons I could be made in the future. Like it's like this thing of like trying like to get everything that like into some source like people have access. Because I mean, it might happen also like no one finds this conversation interesting after us. Mm. Or, or it could be the opposite also. Like, I mean, might be both things. Yeah. Uh, but I think like it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that, like Federico was saying, it, for me it's also like, very important like, how to find these other ways that require, like, could require a lot of time, but also like, very easy like, to have access to, to them. Like, mm. and, and the things that with this... Uh, you can like use the recording. Yeah. Actually, that, that's, what's, uh, that's why we decided to go for podcasts or like mm. YouTube videos and not for text, you know, to, to ask people to contribute maybe through text. Because we thought that this is uh, much you can listen to it when while you're cooking, you know, like yeah. a radio show. But so maybe uh, we could uh, uh, listen mm -hmm. to yeah. us. <laughs> maybe they're just <laughs> videos. <laughs> 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 no, but if you're making notes, it's much more handy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Already in a totally different contact with different people, mm -hmm. but it's like A doing the same thing mm -hmm. as B does 
and it's recorded, so it's there, it's val valuable, but A doesn't know that it is somewhere. And I think that's really, it is valuable, but it loses it, its value, be it mm -hmm. monetary, or when it's not kind of there for other people to build their knowledge or their project on. And I think that it would be kind of really important. And so many times just uh, uh, content loses its relevance or even its it existence. That's a really interesting point. And A values B without B knowing about the existence of A. Yes. That's the interesting immaterial value <laughs> that happens in the culture. It's like A is uh, gaining value by the sheer existence of B without even knowing that he's there. <laughs> That's no, wait a second. I, the I don't moment. understand. Give well, me an example. This, the existence of this podcast, yeah. talking about immaterial value, yeah. uh, will give value to the work of someone working in Basel about basic income ah, yeah. just by its sheer existence this is exactly back to the dat datification of the cultural world this is uh, the fact that everybody everywhere are having the same conversation right now uh, kind of increases the value of this particular conversation even though we don't know who else is having this conversation exactly <laughs> right now but if I cannot yeah. reach that, that this other group it and create some it. synergy but it doesn't matter for whom. You don't need synergy in order to have value in this conversation. What, what, what? Well, where is that? No, no, So it's, uh, it's the value is in the but conversation, the but it's only for us. No, it's not. It's online. Yeah, so it's, it's for yes, the but it's on, it, it's for it's the online. It events into you're talking, more about, you're talking more about use value now, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. real value somehow in a romantic sense, but I meant more like the fact that it just exists yeah. as an item, yeah. that's yes. value. Yeah. I mean, I see that from a very bureaucratic point of view, yeah. again, I go back to this example of how EU products function, yeah. how they evaluate things mm. on number of things that took place with that tag, that type yeah, of yeah. discussion, that topic and so on. And on that level, the, it, it doesn't matter if it was ever really used by somebody. It yeah. exists as a kind of logbook of cultural activity. Mm. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> what I mean. The fact that you have on your EU application of Transmediale a podcast <laughs> about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. The fact that you have it and, and the person who gives the money <laughs> says, okay, this, this <laughs> answers <laughs> my evaluation criteria. Yeah. The next application is going to look in has something similar and that answer it creates value and there's no link between the two conversations happening uh, of course I'm not talking the, the thing is who benefits all this right, exactly. no, I mean you, you have to look at that directly that does the application mm -hmm. well, but <laughs> <laughs> does the application <laughs> about their books yeah. money <laughs> <laughs> right then what about yeah, yeah. <laughs> use it somehow, but it's all very kind of but tricky. It's, also, it's, it's, it's very tricky because, because it's we, this conversation is logged in some file of Transmedial, who knows, maybe <laughs> and next <laughs> next year somebody with a similar approach comes and you say like, ah oh, yes, we have had a similar one in 2015, you should call them because <laughs> we have their number, and you make, uh, you make you make conversation, you know, yeah. and that, that's the no. You, you know, make time. the best of it. <laughs> what the funny thing, when you make the best of it, what, who benefit is both. Is the institution who is financing, who doesn't care anyway, because, for instance, my PhD, uh, uh, I have to do an exam. They just want the paper. And I, I was discussing with my supervisor and saying, oh, you know, fuck, I can't go with this paper. It just doesn't make any sense. They look at me and say, you know what, just make it nice. <laughs> just make sure <laughs> that it looks nice. <laughs> because nobody is reading it. Because it, the, the important thing is that for bureaucracy, the important thing is that the thing is there. <laughs> and I think, I think if they want to make the best of, of it, they cannot think in, in these terms that just for the, the, the existence yeah. creates value. I just know. Don't plagiarize, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't copy information. You can write a form. So well, I disagree. <laughs> so you think that which, they would benefit from just having the podcast that stay there? Because yeah, it, the well, podcast generates value. It's, on yeah, it's not just having the podcast, it's the production of the podcast as well. Maybe it could be happen like <laughs> the gesture of like not having the podcast 
gives more value to the project depending on the line they decide, like with the whole market theme. Because, okay. yeah, because maybe like they decide like not to have the podcast as we were mm -hmm. talking about the art strike. And then, like refusing, like to have this thing, could give another another yeah. interesting layer because it's not <laughs> responding. So it's wrong. not responding like to the <laughs> normal market values that we are normally dealing with. But by refusing, you respond yeah. anyway. Why would you refuse? No, it's just like like like, uh, like an uh, I don't know, like of resistance, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, you are adding that add, and then you are adding yeah. like, a super yeah. slider into your project. You know, you can have, I mean, you can also play that, you know? Yeah. At the end, it's like sure. what kind of role like, you yeah, want to... The, the catch-22 with art is that you're not creating art for yourself, right? You're trying to benefit the public. And this is where personal value and impersonal value comes mm -hmm. back into play. Mm -hmm. Where you're like, this is the catch of us producing culture because it's not for us it's not personal value we're here for no why do you say so they're, they're here because they want to figure out something it's about them first of all yeah. but they want to present it to they're here because they want to present it to the world they're not at home figuring out something they're in a cultural institution figuring out something that everybody is wishing it will go into exhibitions so that other people will be exposed to their brilliant figuring out of <laughs> no, this maybe thing. It's me only. Maybe they don't. That maybe the whole well, thing about uh, ex exhibiting it started, maybe it started from me. <coughs> I, I wouldn't be sure they want to present that. But as far as well, I understood, it's like right for them to go out to the <laughs> But it's like the same thing. I mean, you want to... I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where to turn the microphone to. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a pretty good recording. You shouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> After two yeah. hours of listening, like that. It's well produced. It's not the direction on the microphone. <laughs> Actually, it's not so good in the recording that you changed it. No. Like oh, it's it's it. Sherry, it didn't exist. That's it's the problem. Yeah. That's the That's question yeah. of it Sherry. Been that it's not that you are Oops. doing for the public. <laughs> You're doing because in the moment of sharing it, you it makes sense for yourself. It becomes real. It's not that you just want to do something that is good for someone. But, but the important thing is that it's like when you are in a relationship. How do you know that, that you love someone or the other loves you if you don't ha enter in a relation with the other person and you realize that when the moment that you have in front of another person, suddenly your love becomes real? But we can share. <laughs> 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 this is like classic <laughs> Like it's on sound, SoundCloud and people are taking <laughs> <laughs> it. This is amazing. <laughs> 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 But there's also two levels of sharing. I mean, there's yeah. a sharing that happens now in the room, and yeah. it could exist as such, and that's already yeah. like, I mean, it's the relationship in itself in your paradigm. Mm -hmm. But then there's now the representation of the sharing, yeah. and then how it's being. Shared with like another, like mm -hmm. larger, yeah, so that's which true, which then yeah. creates all this value for, yeah, mm -hmm. institutions, artists, whoever else is. And uh, that's yeah. always the question with like so socially based art, no? Like, it is the first project, and then mm -hmm. there is the secondary project, yeah. which is the representation of the mm -hmm. first the video, project. the project yeah. you did with the community. Yeah. 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 Yes. Maybe yeah, this that's conversation uh, should produce some kind of scarcity, like markets usually do like if you wouldn't just put it online as a podcast but it's only it's like streamed at some kind of regular intervals like <laughs> so on yeah. Friday <laughs> evening yeah. you have to stay home <laughs> otherwise <laughs> you will <really> not hear <laughs> it of course you can hear it on <laughs> mobile device and so on that is a podcast actually it's radio show right? yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Friday, yeah. Friday, yeah. yeah every Thursday yeah. night at 7 you have a podcast half hour and then there's no there's but no, then you create no, no but you download yeah, the you can, podcasts yeah. podcasts you download yeah. but yeah. streaming is yeah. like live yeah. and yeah. it's yeah I was speaking to a researcher last week in Sweden who was doing one of the first research projects on streaming services like Spotify, and he yeah. was telling me that basically, I can't remember now the, the proportions really, but it's, uh, there's so much dead media on Spotify, most of the content are n is never at all mm, played, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, this kind of, this massive kind of dead data out there also, mm, like, yeah. and, 
I don't know. There's something about streaming. Trevor yeah, Falls article about streaming, streaming mm. Airbnb as yes, streaming the city. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. This yeah. It's yeah. all about the potential. It's interesting, yeah. But we yeah. can learn our lines and keep performing this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just stay here. Wait a moment to figure out how the streaming works. It's a more. 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 It's Right, like uh, this invitation is non-transferable. Yeah. This kind of uh, situation, mm-hmm. where you get a bond that somehow is personal for you, you get a bond of this work or of another piece that is personal. <laughs>